In recent years, evidence has emerged that completely shatters our understanding of human history. And by the end of this video, you'll see why we might not have been the first to think like us. Because we're starting to see signs of deep intelligence that go back hundreds of thousands of years, earlier than our species even existed. And if that's true, it changes everything we thought we knew about human history. Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michael. I have a degree in ancient history and on this channel, we discuss the unexplainable mysteries of our past. Let's get into it. The traditional view has always been that Homo sapiens succeeded because we were the smartest of all human species, that this superior intelligence gave us the edge to break out of Africa, outcompete our cousins and dominate the planet. The theory is we were able to do this because something happened around 50,000 years ago that's become known as the Cognitive Revolution, where we suddenly, inexplicably, got smarter. The most recent voice behind this idea is Israeli historian Yuval Noah Harari. His 2014 bestseller Sapiens popularized this narrative and helped cement it in the global imagination. However, Harari is not alone. This explanation is widely accepted by academics scholars and conventional thinking, and has been for decades. The assumption that we are the cleverest is so prevalent in fact, it even manifests in the very name we gave ourselves. Homo sapiens literally means wise man. Now this is a very convenient view. It has allowed us to regain our special status that we lost following Darwin's theory of evolution that showed we were just another animal. But as the smartest animal and as the smartest type of human, we can once again distinguish ourselves as separate from other species and thus as better than the rest. Archaeologists and anthropologists have identified a variety of characteristics that they say are evidence of complex symbolic behaviour. These include burying our dead, wearing jewellery, using ochre pigment for decoration and producing art. The clearest example is the mind-blowing cave art found in Europe dated to roughly 50 to 30,000 years ago. Harari and many others use this as clear evidence we had a cognitive revolution at this time. However, the problem is that we've been around for at least 315,000 years as an anatomically distinct species and probably longer, but apparently this cognitive superpower only kicked in around 50,000 years ago, when we supposedly surged out of Africa. This seems odd. Why did it take over a quarter of a million years for this intelligence to display itself? The theory makes even less sense when you realise that, from a historical perspective, migrating out of Africa is not remarkable at all. Homo erectus did this around 2 million years ago, as did Homo hadobagensis around 600,000 years ago. Both species are supposedly inferior to our own. Scholars try to get round this by performing some mental gymnastics, arguing that somehow, despite being anatomically modern for over 3 300,000 years, something happened around 50,000 years ago that led to a cognitive revolution. However, they provide no evidence of this, how it could have happened or even what it was that caused it. Harari himself even said, we're not sure. Now I think they're not sure how this happened because it didn't happen, or at least not then. In my opinion, the cognitive revolution argument is completely outdated and just plain wrong. Let me show you why. Firstly, the idea is conveniently Eurocentric. It locates modern-day France and Germany, where the cave paintings were found, as the site of the metamorphosis of human behaviour, suggesting that the Homo sapiens who first settled Europe were the ones first capable of symbolic thought. This was perfect for scholars who grew up on the notion that white people from Europe were somehow better than non-white people from elsewhere. However, a further, more substantive challenge to the idea of a cognitive revolution is a ton of recent evidence of Homo sapiens displaying symbolic thought way back to the very beginning of our species. Blombos Cave, dated to roughly 100,000 years ago, twice as old as the so-called cognitive revolution, shows the use and processing of pigments, engraved bones, shell bead ornaments and finely crafted stone objects, clear evidence of advanced symbolic thought. At Classy's River, we see more evidence, shell bead ornaments and the deliberate use of ochre, dated to around 115,000 years ago. At Eskul, archaeologists uncovered jewellery, dating to around 135,000 years ago. At the Kapthurin Formation, we see evidence of pigments use 285,000 years ago. And at Ogolosili, we again see pigment processing, this time from over 300,000 years ago, 
and these pigments didn't even come from a local source, suggesting they were identified as significant and transported a long way for use. Clear signs of symbolic intelligence. And there are many other examples. So right at the very beginning of Homo sapiens emergence, we were already going to great efforts to locate pigments, to decorate ourselves, our items and our surroundings. We clearly already had symbolic intelligence. The repercussions of these discoveries therefore are seismic. Homo sapiens didn't go through a distinct cognitive revolution. Rather, modern human behaviour and intelligence existed in the very earliest members of our species, at least 315,000 years ago. We've been smart the entire time. Now this kind of makes sense. I see no reason that if our bodies were anatomically modern, exactly the same as now, then our brains wouldn't have been too. But what I'm about to say next is even more paradigm shifting, and changes everything we thought we knew about human intelligence. This isn't limited to our species. In the popular imagination, Neanderthals have always been thought of as dumb brutes. If you want to insult someone for acting stupid or like a caveman, perhaps you'd call them a Neanderthal. One dictionary definition of Neanderthals is literally uncivilized, unintelligent, or uncouth man. But it's becoming increasingly clear that Neanderthals were, at the very least, just as smart as us. There is evidence Neanderthals manufactured sophisticated stone tools that required a high level of cognitive skill. We know that they produced glue, and that they buried their dead, a key signifier of complex intelligence. We know they built boats and sailed right across the Mediterranean, colonizing islands such as Crete. We have evidence they built stone circles, likely for some ceremonial or religious purpose. We know they made and wore jewelry and that they even produce cave paintings just as sophisticated as ours. Neanderthals even located medicinal plants and treated illnesses with them. And salicylic acid, the source of penicillin, has been found on their teeth. I think it's clear they were just as smart as Homo sapiens. But it's not just the Neanderthals. Other, earlier human species also display clear signs of symbolic intelligence. Denisovans created symbolic bracelets and advanced stone tools. Homo naledi likely buried their dead and left symbolic engravings beside the graves. We found 400,000 year old carved mammoth tusks, an astounding example of staggeringly early prehistoric intelligence and even further back, around 500,000 years ago, Homo erectus left behind a clamshell with a deliberate, symbolic, zigzag engraving. Heck, Homo erectus were even building boats and sailing across oceans almost a million years ago. So there is plenty of evidence of symbolic thought, and not just in Homo sapiens, but in other human species as well. However, perhaps the most mind-blowing evidence comes from something called the Columbo structure, an arrangement of interlocking logs joined by U-shaped notches and secured at right angles with tapered ends. This construction was likely used as a walkway or even the base of a shelter. It's remarkable that this wooden structure has survived at all, preserved only because it was buried in waterlogged sediment. But that also means it's likely it was just one of countless others that have been lost to time. So why is this so important? Well, it's because it shows that early hominins weren't just using tools, they were building sophisticated constructions. This is evidence of structural engineering, deep into prehistory. It also suggests they may have lived in settled communities, completely challenging the prevailing view that Stone Age humans were nomadic. And here's the crazy part, it's over 400,000 years old, before the earliest Homo sapien remains we've ever found. If hominins were building stable structures that far back, the idea of purely nomadic early humans starts to crumble. But let's zoom in on the engineering. This isn't just some logs thrown together. It's planned, notched, interlocked construction. I mean, that's crazy. Why isn't this kicking up more of a fuss? These weren't ape-like men fumbling around, they were intelligent, capable builders. And that changes everything. The fact that mainstream anthropologists were off by about 400,000 years regarding the advent of structural engineering ought to be a humbling event. If they were that wrong about this, they could be wrong by similar margins on other developmental claims. But crucially, it also pushes this technology and intellectual capacity back to a predecessor of Homo sapiens, and with it the cognitive ability required to produce such a structure. It's likely that the species in question is Homo hadelbegensis which is widely considered the common ancestor of both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. That makes it highly likely that Neanderthals also had the capacity for structural engineering. 
And this brings up a broader evolutionary point. Every cognitive feature that humans and Neanderthals share, and have shared since before their major admixture events, is overwhelmingly likely to be a trait they both inherited from Homo heidelbergensis. The alternative would require that each lineage independently evolved the same advanced traits. Traits like abstract thoughts, planning, structural engineering, and advanced tool use. This seems extremely unlikely, and evolutionary biologists tend to favour inherited explanations for shared complex features, especially between closely related species. That means that these traits didn't just appear recently, they've likely existed since before the divergence of humans and Neanderthals, which may have been as far back as 600,000 years ago. And it's even possible that these capacities stretch back further to when Homo heidelbergensis itself diverged from an earlier ancestor. Thus, the mental faculties that we associate with modern humans, abstract reasoning, construction, symbolic thought, and so on, may have been around far longer than even Homo sapiens. So what does this mean? If human intelligence didn't suddenly appear 50,000 years ago, as we've been taught, but has been with us from the very beginning, 300,000 years ago, or perhaps even 600,000 years ago, what does that mean for how we understand our past? What are the implications of a mind like ours existing for so long? To put it simply, it changes everything we thought we knew about prehistory. Aside from shattering the conventional narrative, it also potentially pushes back intelligence by 600,000 years or more. That is an almost inconceivable length of time. This opens the door to a whole range of possibilities. If humans, including other human species, have been as smart as us for over half a million years, and during that whole time, not necessarily living in nomadic bands, but staying in permanent locations and building settlements, as the Columbo structure suggests, our entire understanding of prehistory needs a rethink. It opens the door to the possibility that early humans developed stable communities, crafted complex tools, managed resources, and engaged in symbolic and spiritual behaviour long before Homo sapiens even appeared. Lost settlements built from wood or earth could have vanished without a trace, leaving us with only fragments. Myths of ancient cities or forgotten golden ages might not be fantasy. They could be distant echoes of real, now long lost human stories, buried by time. Whatever you may think, it seems clear to me at least that our entire understanding of human history needs a massive update. We've been around for at least 315,000 years, and it seems likely that our intelligence goes back even further than this. Yet we only have any record at all of the last few thousand years since the invention of writing. So why are we so sure that sophisticated human cultures didn't rise and fall in prehistory? How can we be so arrogant as to say that the vast, 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 vast majority of our history only consisted of nomadic hunter-gatherers with no real development? Isn't this just a case of recency bias and the fact that over huge amounts of time, evidence disappears, erased by nature? In my opinion, the conventional view massively under rates the achievements and intelligence of prehistoric humans. I would argue that our traditional understanding of prehistory is completely wrong, and that ancient humans were far more sophisticated, interconnected, and advanced than we had ever imagined. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel.